Katika and I were uh, sending emails back and forth uh, to to and from each other, from the troisième arrondissement to the dixième arrondissement, which uh, normally uh, is a leisurely 40-minute walk, and uh, suddenly began to seem as if, like every place, every place else and every place else, we were in two different countries. Uh, and um, I suggested in one of those emails, uh, what do you think about writing a Renga sequence? And uh, the um, uh, Renga being a, a, a form of uh, Japanese syllabic poetry uh, that is uh, usually done in group or in, in concert where one person uh, writes one section. Uh, it's usually a uh, three line, two line, three line, two line with a, with a syllable count. Uh, and then the second person picks up a word or an idea in the last line of uh, the poem that uh, uh, her or his uh, her partner, uh, partners uh, uh, sent, um, sent to them and uh, writes one that starts uh, that starts with that. Uh, usually, the, or often, uh, this was done in a rather party atmosphere with the, with all the people involved being in the same room and passing papers around uh, or, or scrolls around uh, uh, to each other going around the room uh, but uh, in this uh, in this case it was going to have to be done at a distance and email was going to take the place of uh, papers um, but uh, it seemed um, it, se it seemed like an appropriate idea for uh, uh, for, for the situation and uh, something that we might both enjoy doing, and Kantika said yes. Uh, I'd only add that uh, there sometimes there are length variations, both traditionally in the Japanese renga and in ours, where instead of in um, instead of it being uh, ten lines, there's an extra five lines, an extra three and two added, uh, which would explain that why some of these might sound a bit longer than. Than the, than most of them. So yes, there are always multiples of five lines yes. with um, syllabic counts of five seven five seven seven, and we yes. vary between ten lines and fifteen lines yes. generally. And it started on the 29th of March. It started on the 29th of March and uh, uh, has been going on until uh, well, it's my it's my it's my turn to do the next one, and Kartika sent me hers. Uh, I forget a well, word. Well, whether it was this morning or last yesterday. Night. Yes. <laughs> well, shortly after midnight, so I think it qualifies as today. <laughs> March 29th. Crocus, primroses, in lockdown, squat Leopolda shield, the plague spring. Rana sent me a photo of police on Hamra Street enforcing curfew. The boy I watched on the roof of the refugee squat was locked down already, daily, among washing lines. March 30th. Daily lines burgeon on Louis Blanc pavements, each sprout five feet from the next. Human unblossoms outside baker, butcher, grocer's doors. One out for one in, gloved, masked, sanitized, before and after each yield. The pigeons strutting the same sidewalks heed no distancing. March 30th. Distance between us, she wrote long ago, and then made it permanent. Charpentier vêtre à la Vierge while I'm doing the dishes on the comforting old squat black CD player. For a moment, there's connection if only with that perplexed self desiring. March 31st. That desire for self to be more, more than terra firma for virus settlements, begets new creeds. 
Parisians grunt and wheeze praise to Lord jogging while roaming forlorn as our streets. Romans hymn and drum volare from balconies. Jack Bernard downs, yes, thousand, thousand minutes of bones. Libation for eyes and wit to fair agent booth. The right mantra for Lok Lak spurs my quest across the net. April 1st. Across the street, a girl stands lengthily at the window, smoking and looking at empty sidewalks, sun-soaked on April 1st. I wish the tourists would disappear. Now they're gone. Watch what you wish for. In Perda, in quarantine, I dice one more aubergine. April 3rd, aubergine, one small, braised, buttered, basil and beef fried in any form. The thought invades August noons, leaves sharp pug marks on my dreams, these still wintry nights. Preschoolers, play COVID age tag in our courtyard. Not more than two at a time and catch with an outflung glove. April 3rd, we drove out to the place they called Carantina, where crews of ships from Europe once waited 40 days to be declared plague free. Desolate still, but in a lonely high rise in a vast gallery, the 90-year-old painter's new gouaches, texts, tapestries. Afterwards, a huge Armenian lunch in Burj Hamoud with my two young friends, nobody knowing quarantine was just starting. April 4th, Bedlam just started here. En writes from New Delhi's migrant worker camps. How will they lock down millions who have neither doors nor roof? Millions who must walk many moons to reach a home to self-isolate. Prime Minister Modi bids his nation to light candles. President Macron, meanwhile, warned us off face masks unless really ill. Spring, the dearth in my two lands of roses for all the graves. April 5th. Rose garden hidden in the Square du, du Grand Veneur. I'll start again. Rose garden hidden in the Square du, du Grand Veneur. It's starting to bud, but the gates are locked. Only kids from the logements sociaux in the enclosure peer through the grates in strange, bright April sunlight. Here's a petition against euthanizing the sick old. April 6th, sick and old. For Lord and Serge, teens from Block D, I now tick both boxes. L, four inch heels keen across cobblestones, rushes to hold open all our doors. Their mum, though, no longer hails me with nod and smile. Chemo shorn, browless beings in masks could spell one more germ. April 6th. One more spell, one more incantation. It's only the art of the few, or Hildegard of Bingen, or Alice Coltrane. Music calms anxiety. Abida Parveen sings the Hafiz Chazal, cross-legged, eloquent hands. I pick out a word or two. Two words. I need to start again. Sorry. April 9th. Two words now for me. Hamde Kenge. We shall see. Iqbal Bano soars skyward on Fez's refrain. And something 
steelier than hope, lights the heart once again. Heart that fluttered last evening, stole a few instants. The frog in the throat these days hearkens to beasts less winsome. April 10th. Ego, clawing beast, with or without our selfhood, beasts try to survive. As does each isolate I, newly dispensable or in the equation. Lock up these, those forever, then open the doors. I open late windows on unnatural bright April. April 13th, bright as this April. Isa, flushed after cycling from Pontin, risking dour fines we none can afford, brings me dorayaki, homemade, with sweet red beans crushed and flour ground by Nico, Good foraged for weeks. Balm for my bile deluged gut. Swaddling for sleep deprived dreams. Wajdi Muad writes to his infant unknowing son. Quoi dire de plus urgent que l'amour? Sometimes pancakes will do just as well. April 14th. Pancakes. Not wheat, phone calls, texts, instead of wine flavored exchanges in the public privacy of a cafe. Sauteed snow peas, shallots, chicken, wine anyway, but for one. Yesterday's bread, a departing moon above roof dormers, now my horizon. April 15th, my horizon each week, the poppy printed teal hair cap of nurse rose hand stitched the florets for cheer as she disinfects secures in the martial chant so dear to our president my portiquette sight she of calm hands and raptor gaze snags any truant wing that's all of the first section and now we move down two months i think yes <laughs> june 5th Borders were porous with the right passports, or a titre de séjour. Danes can go to Norway now, but Swedes can't. When Suad got her French passport, we drank champagne. She can't see her sister in Stockholm. She's job hunting in Toulouse, going masked to interviews. June 8th. Unmasked interview on Crowdcast. Isle of brief joy, its sole borders, those carved by broadband access, land with no COVID contagion. When Mira and I speak at the US launch of her book, When I Hit You, speak of worse fiction, cast killings, murderous husbands, and more, speak across Boston, London, and Paris. Gracious Shuchi, host from Brookline Booksmith, to readers unseen round the world. From around the world, Lebanese expats have flown back to Al Watan, Moscow, Rio, Montreal, Paris, bringing the virus to their homecomings. In the Beirut or the Beka, numbers leap. Katya wrote to me a month ago. Our epidemic's over. I know she follows the news. Cafes reopened anyway, and crashes. As for the money changers, were their counters ever closed? June twelfth. Close encounters, let's call them, of the fifth or sixth kind. In Bareilly, returnee migrants get soused with liquid bleach. Yes, the kind bottled with danger to eyes and skin, as cure by the state, no less. While Delhi shuts hospital doors on its non-residents. June thirteenth, resident of a city, body, state of mind, I shrug off 
under shadows and sun on the Quai Saint-Bernard. A yoga class salutes the river. A portly couple tangos to their own cassette. I walk without a mask as far as the Jardin des Plantes. June 15th. Assemblage. As far as the eye can feed. The chi, melon, mint, mango, mocha, peach. Sort de sorbet and ice. Glimmer and curtsy. Green swirl in their trays to caboose with me. Isa and Nico, plotters of my first soft tea outside Roman hospital. Lambent this dusk, like our blight reunion at Bertillon, Ile Saint-Louis, still mecca for bon vivant, each palette worshipful in queue. June 21st, in a queue for bread outside the bakery on the boulevard, it's almost normal. An almost normal Sunday market with hand sanitizer dispensers at entrance points. Almost no distrust of the masked person next in line for cherries, shrimp, courgette, hummus, samosas. Which merchants have disappeared? Which shoppers I knew vaguely by sight won't I see again? It's chilly for June. June 27th. June now is the month of solstice show nights, roses, and two presidents convinced of the grandeur of their nations, flanking from north and south the Atlantic, resides in the statues of dead all too fallible men, to be safeguarded far more than the breadth of today's denizens, convinced naming evils of the past would be a crime. Mine christened it separatism. How frail must they find our lands? June 29th. Old, frail, nonetheless, I walked home from Montparnasse invulnerable for the moment, peak cowway against the drizzle. Almost midnight streets full of mostly local, mostly young drinkers and flaneurs, as if nothing had happened. I kept my mask on, except on the Pont Sully, where there was no one, only reverberations of music on the quays, next Decameron, next clusters, July 4th, clusters of color, rain of estival blossoms, caper on Philippe's third floor balcony. They join us and a madcap even breeze to celebrate this, my first visit in many months. First touch of drink, organic, outside home and hospital since early March. Oh.